I don't usually buy games, but when I do, it will only be Sims. Cheers. Mm. Hello, welcome back to my channel. This video, we are going to talk about what I spent in the month of August. And can I just say that this month has been very, very tough on me in terms of like mentally and a little bit of financially. Uh, main life events for the month of August includes um, a lot of gifts and shopping expenses. Also, I paid for my house. I'm getting a house from my previous video, you would know. And this is a month where I signed a 4%, which totals up to like over 50k Sing dollars. Let me just do a quick disclaimer for all of you out there who are new to this channel. This video, I'll be covering a lot, a lot of my own personal finance transparency, meaning that I literally divulge how much I earn, how much I spend on each category. If you're uncomfortable listening to all this, please click away and watch other videos. But if you are just like here, like me, someone who likes to watch these kind of videos for knowledge, then Yes, to you. By no means this should be for comparison purposes. This is just if you want to come to Singapore or if you want to, I don't know, <laughs> see what an average Singaporean earns, this is to you. And without further ado, let's continue. Yeah, this month basically, I face a roadblock in my career. After working 10 months in my company, I didn't get a promotion. Not, not promotion, I didn't get an increment which is also part of my contract so I'm not going to talk so much about that but you will tell from my salary inflow of salary that I'm not um, getting that pay increment which sucks balls anyway this month I also spent a lot on like shopping and like eating out in general because of settling off all those fees I actually had to travel a lot and when you travel a lot you have to eat a lot outside food anyway I have already been eating outside food for a very long time <laughs> so yeah whatever I just need to really take note of this okay so total cash outflow for this month amounts to $2,248.88 This does not include or everything I say here does not include my housing expenses I'm going to cover that in a separate video so I've omitted all those from these accounts $2,248.88 for total cash outflow in the month of August 39% goes towards my usual recurring investments towards um, savings insurance and mutual funds in this month also, I actually purchased another protection plan. It's just a health insurance thing for lady illnesses. And that also means that from this month onwards, every month, I have to pay about like 40, $43.30, make it $43.50 per month that you will see in my health category. Anyway, 26% on food. I'm starting to how much I actually spend on food by myself. Yeah, and it's around like five six hundred dollars I'm trying to make it go lower. This month, I've spent a lot on expensive coffees, which totally sucks balls. But <laughs> um, I don't know. We'll see what we can do about that. Anyway, it's already better than last year. I think last year I was spending easily like over a K on food and drinks. 23% on shopping or gifts. This is the month, guys. You know when you have like a lot of friends and family. I don't even really have a lot of friends and family. It's like my fiance and my sister's birthday. So then I got him a new wallet. And his old wallet was, I think, more than five to seven years ago. Yeah, that I bought for him. So a little bit of a slight um, upgrade. Not really upgrade. But yeah, it's not cheap. <laughs> and I also bought a pair of very very nice heels which I can show to you right now I love the heels but it's just that oh my god now I feel like I will never wear it like, like, I've only worn it once so far and it's just like a really really nice pair of heels that I can wear it to um, formal events but now that I think of it <laughs> I wanted to just replace my old casual office heels with something else 
Cheers. Five mm. percent spent on transport. This is a month where I also told myself that if I can, I will not spend on private transport. And <laughs> I did it. I actually did it. Partly thanks to Grab for increasing their fare so super high after they got listed. Kudos to you. Good job. Whatever. I'm not hiring you. <laughs> 5% on transport. 4% on medical. This medical is basically my necessity. For my Brazilian waxing, now I actually do my... What do you call that? Lip waxing. Moustache waxing by myself at home. I bought this <laughs> lip strip that is only I think 6 or 7 dollars. And yeah, I can use it for a few times which will last me for a few months. Instead of going down to the place and then paying 15 dollars for a sugar waxing. So good job to me. This 4% of medical also includes my new insurance for women early stages critical illness coverage. Uh, remaining 3% is on subscription, monthly subscription and entertainment. On the entertainment side, I actually bought Sims 4. I don't usually buy games, but when I do, it will only be Sims. Sims is like the only game that online game that I am willing to spend my money on. I have this theory that one just shouldn't spend on games. It's like a recurring thing, it's very addictive. I have friends who spend like 1000 or 2000 or even more than that on games and they just quit after a year, which is like... Anyway, that brings us to the total cash outflow of $2,248.88. A total cash inflow this month is a bit like lame. It's basically just my normal usual salary, take home pay, and also some dividends that I've received in the month of August. Hence, total cash inflow amounts to $4,412.35, which also means that my total cash net inflow in the month of August is $2,163.47, which is much lower compared to the previous month and I also didn't hit my target of saving $2,500 every month which kind of like mm, me to watch myself but then again in this month it's already one week in September I have already spent like a whole shitload worth of money so ha 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 anyway as for the house details I'll be making a separate video on that once uh, certain things are more confirmed. I have already paid my first 5% which has to be in all cash. And then the remaining 20% will be in cash and CPF. For those of you who have watched my previous video, you understand what I'm saying. If you haven't and you're planning to buy an apartment in Singapore, you might want to watch that. That's all for today's video. I hope all of you are doing well. I might post uh, what I think about my lack of increment in another video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!